The goal of this project is to autonomously search color objects and classify them based on their colors. The size of game map is 1 by 1 meter, and there are three different color cubes placed on this arena. In the first stage, our rover Rumble keeps searching the cube while it goes around in circles, and it will go toward the object when it sees the object, then do the adjustment according to the information from PixieCam. It will stop and grab the object when the IR sensor hit the large base cube. After grabbing the object, it will go toward the green ball, which represents our unloading area. After Rumble reaches destination, it will drop the cube into our second rover through the funnel. Then it will transfer the object to the classification area. The arm will start taking action when the second rover stops. Finally, the arm will put the cube to the different color bases. Our first rover, Rambo, is a collecting robot with the grabber, pixie, and IR sensor placed in its front. The pixie cam is a digital camera with integrated computer vision algorithm. The IR sensor is facing towards the dump site in order to detect the age of the arena or determine whether or not the rover has reached the object. When the rover is getting close enough to the object, the grabber will grab the object. It will release the object when it gets to the edge of the arena. In our project, the pixie cam will only recognize the largest RGB or yellow color object in its stream. Our object has a tower-shaped structure. It has a large size cube as the base, and three small cubes dig at the top. When the rover is far away from the object, it will use the large cube sitting in the bottom to find the target's location. When the rover is close enough to the object, the large cube will move into the blind region of the pixie cam. In this case, the pixie will use the small cube to locate the object. The IR sensor is facing towards the dump site in order to detect the age of the arena or determine whether or not the rover reached the object. The IR sensor is placed just a little bit higher than the base cube. When the rover is close enough to the object, the value rate from the IR sensor will suddenly go down. In this case, we can know our rover reached the object, and the grabber should be able to grab it. When the rover reached the edge of the arena, the value rate from the IR sensor will suddenly go high. So the rover can know that it has reached the edge of the arena, and the grabber should be able to release the object. One of the limitations of Rambo is the mechanism of the IR sensor. The mechanism of the IR sensor is very similar to the bait. It will firstly send a signal, and then read the signal reflected from the target, in order to measure the distance. If our rover is moving towards the corner of the base cube, the IR sensor will get a wrong result because when the rover is close to the object, the sending port is facing towards the top side of the base cube. However, the reading port is still faced towards the arena. This is the funnel. The top entrance is much larger than the bottom exit. The bottom exit is a square shape that has a side length slightly larger than the diagonal of the object. This design will make sure the object falls into the funnel from the top, meanwhile the object won't stuck at the bottom. Our second rover consists of a bow-shaped container. At first, we decided to put the bow on top of the rover. However, putting the container on top of the rover doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. 
So we decided to use a long board to connect two rovers so that the horizontal space will be better utilized. This is our bow shaped container. The base of the bow is the same size as the base of the object. In this way, whenever the object fell down from the funnel, it will land it exactly at this region. The side walls of this container have different heights. The wall on the further side will have a larger height. The wall on the nearest side has the smaller height. This will prevent the object bouncing out of the container and make sure the arm can reach inside the container easily. The container is wide enough so that the arm is able to grab everything within its range. My name is Xun Ke. I'm going to introduce the motor PI controller in our system. In our system, we have two motor PI controller, the left motor low-level encoder PI controller, and the right motor low-level encoder PI controller. The encoder PI controller can be used to control the rotational speed of our motor. By setting the rotational speed of the left and the right motor to the same value, we can make sure our rover to move in a straight line. For each motor, it has two encoders. The output of the encoder will be set to high and then back to low whenever the motor rotates a certain degree of angle. Since the output of the encoder is a square wave signal, we can use it as the external clock source of our hardware timer, in our case, timer 3 and timer 4. By doing so, we can measure the rotational speed of the motor by checking the counter value of the selected timer. For every 100 milliseconds, the counter value of those two timers will be passed into the left and the right motor PI controller in order to adjust its rotational speed in real time. In our design, the input of the PI controller is the error between the desired wheel speed and current wheel speed. The output of the PI controller is the duty cycle of the PWN signal. The type of the PI controller is incremental PI controller. The reason I didn't choose to use displacement PI controller is as follows. Compared to incremental PI controller, it will cost more computing power. The reason is that when doing the calculation stuff, displacement PI controller will keep adding the result of pass error, which is a very heavy workload. The second reason is that displacement PI controller will be more sensitive to the error. Since error exists in most of the time, using displacement PI controller will make the whole system very unstable. Now, let's take a look at the formula of the PI controller. The formula is as follows. PWM equals PWM plus KP times error plus KI times integral. P of the PI controllers mean proportional. Therefore, KP means proportional constant. By setting KP to a high value, we will amplify the effect of the arrow, which means that we can approach the desired well speed super fast. The drawback is that if KP is set to a too, too large value, the overshoot will also be too large. As you can see in the first image, KP is set to 200. At this point, the whole system is very unstable and the overshoot is also very large. In order to, re in order to reduce the effect of overshot, we can reduce the value of KP. As you can see in the second image, the overshot disappeared and KP is set to 13 instead. However, the system is still oxalate. The reason is that KI is too large. So what is KI? I of the PI controllers mean integral, so KI is mean integral constant. The integral part will keep adding the pass arrow. Usually, KI is set to a low value. This part will be very useful because if you only use proportional part, when the arrow gets smaller enough, the effect of proportional part can be negligible. At this point, since proportional part contribute nothing, it will always have some error between the current wheel speed and the desired wheel speed. That error is called steadied error. Integral part will be very useful to remove the error. The reason is that if the steadied error is, is exist, the integral of all the past error will keep getting larger and larger. Since integral value get larger, the output of the PI controller will also get larger. At last, the error will be gone and the integral will remain the constant value. In our final version, KP is set to 25 and KI is set to 0 0.4. We can find the whole system is very stable. At this point, if, we, if I hold my red motor fixed for a while, the current wheel speed of the red motor will be set to 0, and the, re and the error will be set to a large value because the current wheel speed is, is 0. If I pass the error into the formula above, the value of the PWN signal will actually increasing. That's the reason why we can find uh, this a drastically increase in the, in the third image. Now, in order to better demonstrate the performance of the PI controllers, I prepared a video for you guys. 
In the video, the rover is placed at the edge of the table. It will move 100 cm forward with a constant speed 20 ticks per 100 ms. Enjoy it! My name is Cong Yi. I'm responsible for color sensor in our project. Since we need to use a color sensor to detect color object, I decided to use a pixie cam. At first, I was using pixie cam 1, which is not a good choice, because pixie 1 will send data constantly without user requesting it. In addition, the pixie cam 1 has less function than pixie cam 2, therefore I decided to go with the pixie 2. Pixie 2's FPS is 60, which means every second I will get information from 60 frames. And Pixie Cam 2 has uh, multiple interfaces options, such as UART, SPY, and I2C. Instead of constantly sending data, Pixie Cam 2 will only return data upon request. Pixie Cam 2 also has a software that allows users to adjust camera settings and label signatures. It also has a powerful function to allow users to train it to recognize an object. The accuracy will increase in a large amount when, when using training instead of just labeling. PCCAM2 also has other functions such as line following, object tracking, and so on. I use UART interface to communicate with the PIXI. The boundary that I choose is 115 kilobits per second. In our project, I'm only using one command to get all the useful information, which is get blocks command. This command asks for all the blocks Pixie detected in a frame. The data contains the color signature of detected object, the height and the width of the object in pixel, center of each block in pixel, and so on. After I receive the useful information, I will parse them into two entries, directions and signatures. Direction is for checking if the object is in the center of the frame, and signature is for color detection. Then I will send them to motor thread and arm thread respectively, so that the motor can adjust its direction and the arm can do the classification. Hello everyone, I'm Moki. I'm going to introduce the R sensor and the flex server in this project. The R sensor that we used had a range of 4 to 30 cm, and it gave us analog reading that can be converted to the digital data using the ADC pin on the pick board. Then it can be converted to the actual distance value using our lookup table. On our first rover rumble, we put the R sensor face down to the floor, so it can do the edge detection and also the object detection. The output voltage of R sensor is constant when the rover is on the searching state and R sensor hit large base cube or hit edge of our first arena, the voltage should be small. So, the grabber will take action when the output R sensor changed. In our flex server, we have a router to analyze requests from proxy server. Depending on content of request, the flex server will store or retrieve the data from the database, and also update the number of the correct messages or wrong messages in the database. Therefore, our two rovers and the arm are able to communicate with each other. I'm also responsible for the implementation of the communication relating thread. In order to make sure each component can receive the updated message in real time, communication is critical. In our project, we use Wi-Fi RN-XV Wi-Fi adapter to provide us wireless connectivity. It used the UART interface running at baud rate 400k to communicate with the microcontroller. The Wi-Fi module used TCP IP protocol to communicate with the server side in order to increase the reliability and reduce the chance of package loss. The format of the message that used to communicate between the server side and the Wi-Fi modules is designed by ourselves. The picture above shows our message protocols. Our message protocol is consist with the following component, a star byte, an n byte, a 10 byte binary values, which is used to represent the lumps of the whole message, a 32 byte MD5 hash value, and a JSON payload. 
Inside the JSON payload, there's a field named sequence number. It is initially set to 0 and will increment it by 1 whenever the message is sent. This allows the receiver to detect whether or not the message loss has happened. If the receiver receives continuous message without consecutive sequence number, it indicates message loss has happened. The workflow of checking the integrity of the message is as follows. First of all, the proxy server will discard all the bytes it receives until it receives a star byte. After receiving the star byte, the proxy server will check if the following 10 bytes are integers value 0 or 1. If it is not, then the data is corrupted, because in this part, only 0 or 1 are valid data. After receiving 10 bytes binary value, the proxy server will receive 32 byte MD5 hash value. After receiving the MD5 hash value, the proxy server will keep receiving the JSON message until the lumps of the message is equal or smaller to the 10 byte binary value. Then it will check whether the last byte is the store byte. If it's not, the data is corrupted. After receiving the JSON message, the proxy server will calculate the MD5 value of the received JSON message and compare it with the received MD5 value. If they are the same, the message is valid. Otherwise, the data is corrupted. For stationary ARM constraint, it must be able to move in 3 degrees of freedom. It must cost less than $120 in total. The design must put safety in the first place for either testing or demonstrating purpose. The design must comply with IEEE code of ethics. Specifically, it must be original and avoid any kind of plagiarism behavior. Before going further into the technical detail, let's go over some of the basic idea of what my arm unit is supposed to do. As the name suggests, the robotic arm needs to be able to pick up an object through a series of movements. Additionally, according to our project idea, it would also be able to classify the object according to its color. For example, red color object goes to red container, blue color object goes to blue container and so on. Hardware component of the arm can be described through the block diagram as you can see on screen. It contains two main parts. The upper part is the communication region which manages all communication between stationary arm and the server. The lower one is the operation region which manages all the arm movement. The workflow of each region is as a follow. For the operation region, if an object within 15 cm vicinity detected by the IR sensor, the 10-bit distance information will be sent to ADC at pin 25 through AN0. The information is processed inside the interrupt service routine and then sent to PIC32 microcontroller arm thread. Upon receiving the object information, the PIC32 arm thread will invoke a hardware timer we create a timing pool every 20 milliseconds back to the arm thread. The arm thread uses pool to control three separate OC, OC1, OC2, and OC3 through three different PWM. As for the communication region, the stationary arm unit is able to acquire other unit information on the database through the use of Wi-Fi UART interface, pin 52 and 53 respectively on board UART. At 57, 600 more Update port request information contain the current working status of the arm and the number of object delivered. Receive get request information contain the color of the object. Now let's take a look at the arm software component through the task diagram. For threads, we have a stationary arm thread. This thread is responsible for controlling the arm motor through three separate OC. Before initiating the arm movement cycle, which contains pick up, rotate, drop, and rotate back, this thread needs the distance information of the object from the IR sensor through the stationary arm queue, as well as the color of the object from the database through the receive data thread or I thread. On the all needed information acquired, the thread will control the arm through a finite state machine that enables it to pick up the object. Rotate to the correct destination, color box that match the color of the object, and drop the object into the box. And finally, rotate back to the origin ready for the next object. RX and TX thread. 
These two threads responsible for the communication between the stationary ARM unit and the database. For the interrupt service routine, we have a 20 millisecond hardware timer ISR. On OC PWM to control the servos are driven by this timer. The ISR itself has three modes of operation, zero mean idle mode. In this mode, the ISR will be on standby, one mean detecting mode. Software timer only send a distant information to sensor queue if both distant criteria less or equal than 15 cm and the status flag equal to 1 are met. Number 2 mean timing mode. Software timer acts as a timer with regulated timing of ARM finite state machine by sending a pull every 20 milliseconds to make change on the rotation and the angular PWM. UART ISR. This ISR responsible for message to the database through the TX thread as well as the incoming message through the database through the IX thread. As for the communication queue, hardware timer ISR message queue. This message queue contains a flag message from the stationary arm thread that will change the ISR mode, which are 0 idle mode, 1 detecting mode, and 2 timing mode. Initially set to 1, then change to 2 until the arm unit has completed its delivery cycle. The recipient of this queue is the hardware timer ISR. Stationary arm queue. The message queue contains unsigned in AT distant information received from ADC inside the hardware timer ISR in detecting mode and unsigned in timing pool from hardware timer ISR as well as unsigned in color sensor received from the received data thread. The recipient of this queue is the stationary arm thread. The TX communication queue. This queue handles the pre-packed information that needs to be sent the to the database to the TX thread. Finally, with all the technical details out of the way, let's see what the ARM can do with them to complete its task of classification. First, the IR sensor is used to detect the rover. The ARM unit will communicate with the database to get the color information of the object before delivering it to the correct location. After finished delivering, ARM can update its status to let the rover know when to leave. The rover uses a low-level encoder PI controller to make sure that it can move in straight line, and you have an object that has been correctly classified. Mm -hmm.